Someone asked, uh, you know, do I have any funny D&D stories? Yes, I do, and this happened just recently. I haven't been D&Ding for long. I haven't been dungeon mastering for long. I don't know what you want to call it. DMing? DMing, sure. Dungeon mastering sounds awkward. Let me take a sip first before I tell the story. All right. So this happened not too long ago. What happened was, this is the first, um... It's the first campaign I've run in a long time. And I think I went overboard with the encounters, right? So it was my cousin, my, my two cousins actually, they're both part of this campaign. And they were supposed to go, we were we were just improvising this campaign because uh, another friend of ours were, was also part of this campaign, but unfortunately she couldn't join. So we had to make do. I was like, okay, well, we can't we can't do that campaign right now. I know you guys really wanna play D&D. I wanna play D&D too. Um, how about this? How about we both just improvise? All of us just improvise. Just make up a story. And I was like, all right, cool. And then we did. We made up a story. We made up a town. I made up a town, rather. Uh, and I led them on a quest to basically find this witch and kill this witch in her sleep. Uh, but literally, you had to be in her dreams to kill this witch. And so they took it on and stuff. And I was like, oh, here's the, the witch. Blah, blah, blah. You meet her sister, she gives you a, si a, a sigil to actually enter the dream harmless, harmlessly. And then they reached a point where I was like, there are three doors that represent her ego, her id, and her super ego. You have to enter one of these doors and defeat the demon that's corrupting her mind. And like, I mentioned, I think the super ego was, was full of like the most badass monster demon ever. And I was like, don't go there. I don't recommend going there. And then they did. First thing, that was my number one boss. And they went straight for it. And they killed him in like five turns. And I was like, well, shit. I had to come up with something harder for the next door. So they go to the next door. That one represents her ego. And in the ego, it's like a dungeon, a, f a very black cavernous dungeon. They can barely see anything. And they were fighting a bunch of zombies and stuff like that inside her ego. And I kept mentioning in this in this like cavern that they're skittering above them, like tiny thousands of feet crawling on the ceiling. And in the and I keep telling them, you know, it sounds like it's getting closer. It's skittering around. It's getting faster. And then one of or I think two of the zombies got eaten by whatever was up there. And then it came down. And it was like this caterpillar thing. Anyways, long story short, the caterpillar, super fucking difficult. It almost killed them and almost TP, uh, TPK'd the entire fucking campaign. Fun. Uh, but then the next week, they came back. They resuscitated. They, they they healed up. Tried to challenge the monster again. Again, total failure. The demon inside was like, yo, I'll make you an offer. They made him an offer. <laughs> and, the, and my fucking cousin, for some reason, every time he was revived by the demons to get this offer... He got up, and then he tried to stab the fucking demon that always tried to give him an offer. And when he did that... Oh my god. When he did that, because this demon was super badass and super strong, it actually swallowed the, stom the, the sword inside its stomach and then killed him, the fucking idiot. I don't know why. For Christ's sake. Ah. <sighs> He's a fucking moron. He tried to kill the most badass demon while the demon was resurrecting him. N and he di and he died. He resurrected the kid he the, the kid with like one health. And he's like, alright. And he stabbed him and killed him. Great. Anyways, uh, the other the the other player that was actually alive, he um he made the deal with the devil. And he brought his body, the, the his buddy's body, back to the hospital in the town. Because I was like, I was being forgiving. It was their first time playing D&D. Okay, idiot. I'll say that you're alive and that your dream self was killed. I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you for now. He rolled a success on the medicine check, so he's fine. He's alive. Fine. Brought him back to the fucking hospital. My cousin was like, okay, I'm getting tired. This is, uh... I, I'm, I'm you know, I gotta, I gotta go to work tomorrow. I'm like, cool, whatever. But my other cousin was like, you know, I don't have uh, work tomorrow, so let's just keep playing. And I was like, okay, this is when the fucking funny thing happened. The funnier, funnier than the fucking demon getting stabbed by the person he's resurrecting, stupid idiot. Um, 
my cousin thought for some reason he wanted to go to the luxury district of my town the city right and the luxury district has casinos fancy restaurants fancy food fancy entertainment all that kind of stuff he went to the lottery first nothing really happened or lottery sorry he went to the the casino first nothing really happened it, it was just kind of silly he's just like trying to win big in the slot machines quote unquote the magical slot machines um but he didn't he's like all right and then he left and then he went to the most fanciest restaurant in the luxury district which was like it had like a fancy giant chandelier in the in the lobby itself and it had like the most beautiful intricate designs it, it was like gold tilted uh, tilted uh gold tinted uh um you know signs and the, like the the font of the fucking menu was in gold it was so fucking ludicrous it was like ludicrously rich right and he wanted to go inside but unfortunately there was a bouncer that was like you can't go in he's like oh come on let me go in he's like no i can't let you go in you look poor as fuck he's like all right fine <laughs> and then he walked away and then he went to the other restaurant another fancy restaurant mind you but it was a uh it was like an aquarium like uh, an aquarium seafood place kind of thing and the lady was being very courteous and was like hey sir thank you for joining uh let me let me get you a seat just a, one person okay and then she she brought him to like the most fanciest seat in the restaurant which is like this giant fish tank that was illuminating the the entire uh side of him and everything was blue and nice and look and cool looking right and she was like here sir here's the menu and then he saw the menu and he's like oh, i want some breadsticks to start off she goes out gets the breadsticks and as he's checking the menu he notices that like each item costs like 200 to like 2000 gold just for a meal and <laughs> it was like oh <coughs> it's like holy shit <laughs> and he knew there was no way out because he could have just like walk out like a fucking sucker so he was like um okay uh, i have an idea and then she came back with the breadsticks and then he was like um i'm gonna fake passing out <laughs> and he was like uh, are you sure you are, are you sure you want to do that he's like yeah i want to fake passing out <laughs> i was like okay um roll for uh theatrics or, or acting or whatever it is and he rolled like an 18 and he was like frothing at the mouth and <laughs> It was like seizing up and shaking violently, and then he passed out. And the the waitress was like, "What's wrong? What? Oh my goodness! Somebody, a doctor, please!" And, and then a, there was an actual doctor in the restaurant, and the doctor checked up on his body, and and he made another deception check to to show like the the doctor that you know it, it was hard to deceive a doctor. He had to roll like above a uh, sixteen or seventeen or something motherfucker rolled like a natural 20 and i was like yeah i guess you're pretty much convincing the doctor that you're passed out and like having a seizure because your heart rate is so fast and he's like he's thinking you might have a cardiac arrest or something and he's like oh, okay take him to the hospital and then he ended up in the same fucking hospital that he brought his own comrade to <laughs> and as soon as they laid him down and they found out that he had nothing wrong with him he was like, uh, and then he was like, I'm gonna run. And then he ran out. He ran out of the hospital. Security couldn't stop him. He left the fucking building and he went over to the, uh, the, um, the business district, which is where like just business people work and stuff. And he, he was, he managed to escape. Them. And then still wanting to show off that he had a lot of money, which he didn't. He only had 200 gold. He, um, he went to this bar and in this bar, it, it's a very nice looking bar. It's not too fancy, but it's like, <laughs> it's like fancy enough that it's for like businessmen. And he asked like, I'll have your finest drink to the bartender. And the bartender's like, oh, my, my fanciest drink. Hmm. Give me a second. Then he went down the cellar. And after about five minutes of searching, he came back up the cellar and he's like, sir, I have this drink. I think it might fancy your taste. And it was this very ornate looking bottle it was like 
beautiful beautiful bottle the bottle itself looked like it was made out of gold which it wasn't it's just it looked like that the it, it, it was like a a wine that has been aging for 40 to 50 years it, it looked beautiful and it was uh it was a, a kind of traditional kind of wine that was only made or only given to people that um that are like business owners right like people who own the business district that's for them like when they want to celebrate and even they don't actually buy the bottle they only like use it for traditional reasons like you they, they take a little sip they drink it they pass it around and stuff but he was like i want the whole bottle <laughs> the bartender was like um oh sir well that's oh i i i can't really give a price on the bottle itself it's so priceless it's meant for like tradition and and most people don't drink like even my richest customers don't take the whole bottle he's like ah just name a price he's like uh i don't know sir like uh if i had to say eighty thousand gold <laughs> and my cousin was like uh, uh, are you fucking crazy <laughs> he's like well sir it's 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 my most precious bottle it's it's something not again my richest customers don't even buy a whole drink they just they just take a little sip and stuff like uh, but it's okay i can give it i can give you a drink for like 800 gold you know and he's like uh i'm gonna run out <laughs> he runs he runs out the fucking he runs out the bar dust covering him he just boom, like a fucking bugs bunny cartoon he just he became a dust cloud and he ran out he ran out that's <laughs> and then he he ran so far he went to the common district <sighs> oh my god it doesn't end there he went to the common district and in the common district he um he found uh, a dilapidated looking building and it's like around 12 o'clock at night you know so 12 o'clock in the morning pretty pretty late um he didn't really find any stores i don't know what the fuck his purpose was he, he must have like wanted to buy something you know but he couldn't afford anything even though he had 200 gold i mean granted 200 gold is a lot for him but he was going to the richest part like he only had enough money for like commoner stuff you know like a, a new set of armor or like a new great sword and two bows you know he had enough money for that but for some reason he was going to the luxury district and the and the fucking business district which was like the richest fucking places and like he wanted to flex with 200 gold i don't even know what the fuck he, i don't even know but anyways um he went on over <laughs> he went on over and saw this dilapidated general store and it, it was called the fat cat uh store or the fat cat general trade and he went inside and he saw that there was a bunch of cats roaming around they were all meowing purring at him you know and stuff like that and he <laughs> just looked around and he was like i don't know what uh, what kind of fruit they have and i was like well they got like you know apples oranges grapes uh, watermelon he's like oh i'll take the watermelon i was like oh okay sure he grabs the watermelon he goes to the front desk he rings the bell one of the cats comes up and he's just like purring and he pets the cat a little bit he's like thank you sir i really like the pets the cat started talking to him he's like uh okay uh i wanted to buy this watermelon he's like Oh, good thing, sir. Good thing. Uh, not many people buy my stuff nowadays since I'm just a cat. Uh, that'll be five gold. He's like, all right, here's five gold. I want to know more about your story. And then they talk. They found that, you know, the cat has a witch, uh, a sorceress for a wife. And they've been having to fight. You know, all kind of backstory and stuff. I had to make up on the spot, which, by the way, I am fucking cool at that. I'm really good at that. Don't ask me for names, though. And he bought the watermelon. And he, like, he tried to convince me not even like in game he tried to convince me the dm to have this cat as a party member because he really liked the fact that this cat could talk but i kept saying in character as the cat that the cat is not an adventurer in fact he's like around his 50s it's just that he's a cat he sounds younger than he is and he acts younger than he is he's like a two-year-old cat you know 
So it's it's he tried his hardest to dece to deceive me into getting this fucking cat as like a familiar for him, and it's just the silliest fucking shit. Uh, but he ended up buying a watermelon, and this is the final fucking thing that happened, and it's the dumbest thing that happened. But the for some reason, even though he has two hundred gold, he could easily afford a night at the inn right and he decides not to go to any of the inns in the common district the business district or just like the poor district any of those districts anywhere he just decides i'm just gonna go to the back alleys like he asked me are there any back alleys around here and i'm like yeah there's back alleys everywhere it's the common district you know there's alleys everywhere he's like yeah i'm gonna go to one of the back alleys he's like okay he goes in there and he's like yeah, I'm gonna... Is there any trash cans around here? I'm like, yeah, there's a trash can right there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna open the trash can and sleep in there. <laughs> I'm like, you've been trying to flex your fucking money this entire time, and you're gonna end the night, the session, sleeping in a fucking trash can, like, Grouch. Like, the fucking Sesame Street Grouch guy. What's his name? Oscar the Grouch. God damn it. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, you open the trash can, there's a bunch of trash in it. He's like, fuck. And then he takes all the trash out, and he goes inside, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go cozy up and sleep in here. I'm like, okay, you're, since you're such a big guy, he's a fighter, he's a big fighter in real, not in real, but in the game. Uh, he's like six foot one or something, six foot two, he's pretty big, he's like about 220 or 240 pounds, and he goes inside, he can't really fit with the watermelon, he's like, fuck. So he's like, alright, I'm gonna put the watermelon outside and sleep inside the fucking trash can. And I'm like, okay. You do that, and now you're sleeping in a trash can. He's like, all right, cool. And that was the end of the session. This guy has 200 gold. He could easily afford a, I don't know, just a cheap inn for like 10 gold. Or like a fucking moderate to wealthy inn for like 75 gold. But he's choosing to sleep inside of a fucking trash can. Even though he has more than enough money to buy a night at an inn. Fucking idiot. Alright. But anyways, that's my story about the indie. That's the funniest story I know. And I had a blast. That was literally just an hour of... Of, of just single player D&D. And it was wild. It was stupid. It was funny. And I never knew I could have so much fun with just one person playing D&D with me. But it was good. I loved it.